Hey there, Scipio here, and in this video we're going to cover setting up the tail on the Raptor E550 FBL. We're going to pick up where we left off in the last video where we set up the head, so go ahead and get your transmitter turned on, power up your heli, and get your fly barless controller put into programming mode, either through the interface by going into your menu or by going into the GT5 tools, which is what I'm gonna use here uh, for most of this. So I'm gonna try and keep this at about a 10 minute video, but tail setup, especially for new builders, is a very confusing topic. The initial servo setup, getting the servo arm centered, uh, is all fairly simple, but the challenge comes in when we start talking about what pitch setting we want to set our tail rotors to be, whether it's a neutral zero pitch or as some people would call positive pitch or negative pitch or left, right, you know, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to take a little bit of time to go over that and hopefully when I get done it will make some sense. All right, so once you're into GT5 tools, you want to click on the center servo button and that's going to center the servo so that we can check our arm and figure out which arm we want to use on this star. So basically, I'm just turning the star to different positions to look for the arm that points the most straight down. There's always one that's kind of the best one for the job. And uh, this one seems to be it because uh, the arm is as close to straight down as I can get uh, of all the other arms. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this with a black Sharpie just so when I take it off, and install my servo ball, I know which one I'm working on. And of course, this is how it looks uh, with the Sharpie on there. It's subtle, but helps me keep track of things. So I'm going to use the second hole from the end on the servo horn. And I'm going to try that because I think that that's going to be a good place to start. But the reality of it is, I may change that up later as I get further into the setup. Because how much travel I have is going to be dependent upon which hole I'm using, as well as uh, resolution and speed. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of that in this video, but just note that I'm going to start with the second hole from the outside edge uh, to start with. And when I measure that, that looks to be about 13 millimeters, 13 and a half millimeters. And just for reference, the hole uh, that's before that, the third from the outside or second from the inside, is about 10 millimeters, and then the outside hole is somewhere around 16 and a half millimeters. All right, so now we can put our servo arm on the servo. Remember to keep the servo powered and at the center position so that you get it back into the right location. This screw does not require thread lock because we are not in a Metal Gear servo, again, using the stock servos. But please don't forget to screw these things in. I've heard lots of horror stories of people forgetting to screw their servo horns in. It's very easy to uh, overlook as you get through this. Now we're going to set the sub trim, and I'm doing this in the GT5 touch pad. You can also do it inside GT5 tools. And you can see here what my final sub trim ended up being and where you would change that in GT5 tools. All right, so now what we want to do is adjust our tail servo rod length to uh, be ideal for our setup. And in my case, I want to set it up with about somewhere between 6 to 8 degrees of pitch. And I'll go over that here uh, in a second. But I'm just adjusting the length, checking to see how the pitch looks, and then tweaking it a little bit more until I get it where I think I want it. And, uh, and then I'll snap it onto the ball. All right, so I'm using some balling pliers just to snap that into place. And also make sure that the Thunder Tiger logo is facing out away from the ball. That's the proper way to put the link on the ball. All right, so let's talk about this pitch thing as it relates to the tail. If you fold your blades up and touch them together like this, you're at zero pitch. On this particular heli, that means that the tail pitch slider is going to be centered on the shaft. You have neutrality. You're not uh, either in a negative or a positive pitch direction. Now, what gets confusing is when you talk in terms of positive pitch, for example, on a tail, it's a little bit tougher than, uh, say, with the main rotor blades where up is positive and down is negative because you're dealing with left and right here. And uh, as you're looking at this from the back of the heli, the right side is generally going to be the negative side and the left side will be the positive side. 
Now, it's backwards from what your stick direction is, so this is where it gets confusing. If I move the stick right, then my tail slider is going to move left, just like this. If I move my stick to the left, it's going to move to the right. So it gets a little bit confusing. Now we're back to center. Basically, what I want is positive pitch on this side to counteract the rotational torque of the main rotor. So it's easier to visualize the pitch if you have the blades folded up. And you can see here how the movement of the tail changes based on the pitch. Now if I turn them straight up and down where you can see the actual leading and trailing edge, uh, you can see how, how that affects as well. So on the top one that you see there, the top blade, that's the leading edge pointing backwards. And it dictates the direction of the tail. Whichever way that leading edge is pointing is the direction the tail is going to move. So again, our clockwise rotating main rotor is going to want to turn the heli counterclockwise. Counterclockwise would mean the tail will move to the right, which means we want to point our leading edge of the tail blades to the left to counter that. So we're going to end up with something like this. By about 6 to 8 degrees, 7 is probably the sweet spot on this particular heli. And again, we're back to uh, what I was doing before with regard to setting the length of the control rod is getting that 7-ish degrees built in uh, at center servo position or center stick. So what that means is with the tail rotor, now I'm looking back from the front of the heli, with the stick in the center position, that front blade is going to be canted a little bit to the left side of the heli or towards the tail boom. All right, so now that we have our center stick position established with that little bit of positive pitch, I'm going to uh, move the stick all the way right, moves the pitch slider all the way left, and then I'm going to adjust the end travel on that. And basically what I want to do is get it bumped all the way over as far as I can uh, up towards the tail case before it actually touches and starts to bind. So I start at a low number and I kind of work my way up uh, just a couple clicks at a time and it slowly bumps that until uh, I'm as far as I can go. Now I'm told that your endpoint should be in the range of 150 to 200 and as it turns out I'm at the very top end of that range. Right at 200 seems to be perfect for me. If I was outside of that range I would need to move to a different hole on the servo arm to get back into that range. But right now at 200 I'm well within uh, where I need to be. So I'm going to leave my servo ball where it is. So now that we have our positive pitch side established as far as our servo endpoints, we want to match that on the opposite side of the pitch slider. So I can, I can only go so far before I hit the tail case. Uh, but because I'm already biased in that direction anyway because of the 7 degrees of pitch offset I put in, then I've got a lot more room on the right side of that slider shaft. But I don't want to use the whole thing. What I want to do is match whatever value I came up with on the first uh, side to the second side. That way I have equal feel uh, on both ends of the pitch range. My rudder controls will be consistent on either side of center. And while we're still in the tail setup screen, it's probably not a bad idea to double check your center pulse, update frequency, and servo delay levels. And one more thing to check is that your front guide for your tail control rod should be pushed as far forward as you can get it and still have free movement of your tail control rod. Being as close to this junction as you can get should help prevent any binding in the system. So that's it. Um, clear as mud, right? <laughs> Uh, it actually is much quicker to actually do the setup than it is to explain it. So hopefully I didn't destroy it too bad. Uh, but the whole concept of tail pitch direction has, uh, has been a challenging one for me over the last year and a half that I've been in the hobby. Uh, and I know that there's a lot of other people out there who get confused by that. So uh, at any rate, that's it for this video. We're getting close. Next, we're going to get into making sure that our sensors are all in the right directions and get our main rotor blades, check the balance, and get them installed. And, uh, and then we're about ready for a maiden. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.